you get enough computing power to cross the current threshold, or you get one last theoretical breakthrough that crosses, crosses your current threshold of computing power, and that perhaps is when you get true AI. Or you might say that brute force, more computing power, more brute force, lets you get away with a less clever design. But if you don't know what you're doing, if you fundamentally just have no clue how to build a mine, then all the computing power in the world may not help you. Or another way of seeing this graph is as an extension of Moore's law of mad science. Every 18 months, the minimum IQ to destroy the world drops by one point. <laughs> <clears throat> so from the perspective of the intelligence explosion school, the critical threshold may have nothing to do with human equivalence per se, because humans don't rewrite their own source code. We're not trying to do something that is equivalent to something that humans do. You could get the intelligence explosion as the result of a theory breakthrough in self-modification, reflectivity, thinking about thought, and other things could fall out of that if the AI was smart enough to add them to itself. Oh, okay, so to sum up, the three schools' core theses are as follows. Accelerating change. Intuitive futurism is linear, but technology change accelerates. Event horizon. Transhuman minds imply a weirder future than flying cars and gadgetry. Intelligence explosion. Minds making technology to improve minds is a positive feedback cycle. So the three schools of thought are logically distinct, but can support or contradict each other's core or bold claims. The core thesis all support each other. They don't necessarily imply each other or logically require each other, but they support each other. And I, think, and, I, and I fear that is why the event horizon, the intelligence explosion, and accelerating change are often mashed together into singularity paste. The, the, these three schools did not always exist. There may be room for a fourth school. Um, I personally do not like usages that widen the singularity term too much, make it too generic. Um, or, or just say, well, there's some kind of unspecified big event in the future. This is where you get the um, sort of bloggers who read one post about the singularity and go, ha-ha, it's the nerdocalypse. They, they haven't found a, any substantive claims associated with any of the major schools or the lesser schools, that, um, some of which may very well emerge here at this uh, summit. But a new school should... The, the, these three schools all have substantive, substantive theses, interesting claims. You can distinguish their premises from their conclusions. A new school should make in, equally interesting claims, and it should say, here's the, here's the premise, and here's what results from that. Here's why the premise is interesting. And um, if you give the singularity a new definition, as, I, as I'm sure many people will do at the summit, I, I would ask that you please, for the love of cute kittens, Tell us exactly what you mean by the word. And this has been Eliezer Yudkowsky for the Singularity Institute for Artificial Intelligence. Raise your hand or ideally go up to a mic. You got any questions, anybody? There's one. So, so the question was, how are you going to make the leap to using uh, multiple processing cores? And, um, well, there's probably uh, people who will be speaking who know a bit more about that than I do. I mean, I've been going around saying it is not about brute force, that the true way of AI is as pure as the moonlight reflected from a pool of still water. <laughs> so, you shouldn't re so if you are following the true way, then you should not need all that much computing power, though, of course, it is always fun and helpful to have. It's just the, the notion of throwing brute force the problem that I object to. Um, my guess is that um, it, it, there's all different kinds of AI algorithms, and parallelizing some of them will be more work than others. Um, there's, there's not going to be a magic bullet for it, but nonetheless, AI does tend to be a bit more parallelizable than most ordinary computer programs, though it does depend on the algorithm.
Um, that, that would be a question for tomorrow's talk, I think, actually. <laughs> Um, is, there, you know, yeah. is there biology and evolutionary theory stuff that got us here? How does that contribute to this? There, there's certainly a, a possible set of paths to the singularity that involve brain-computer interfaces or hacking the brain. It's not actually my own specialty, so maybe I don't talk as much about that as I should. Um, I personally tend to be sort of skeptical because the first heavier-than-air flying machine was neither an artificial nor a scaled-up bird. And I, I do think that despite the um, seeming incredible difficulty of starting over from scratch, it is easier in the end, that once, that once we know what we're doing, it will be easier to make it from scratch than to m hack with the existing enormous mess of spaghetti code that is the undocumented, non-end non user modifiable human brain. Um, I, will, I, I will be talking about ethics tomorrow. I don't, I don't know that I would see the relation of technology to ethics as a separate subject. Technology is a function of our existence as humans, and, so, and ethics is what guides our existence as humans, and therefore, you know, there's a, there's a natural rather than a special joining between technology and ethics. Well, the, uh, the singularity, the, 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 uh, the question was, um, what, what do people uh, donating money to the Singularity Institute expect the Singularity Institute to do? Um, and have we been seeing an exponential increase in contributions? <laughs> 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 and, and we did actually receive more than twice as much in donations this year as last year, for which we may credit Tyler Emerson. And <laughs> as as well as, our mat as well as our matching funders, Rob Zera, uh, Peter Thiel, and Michael Vassar, hmm. who, who matched uh, many donations. <laughs> what do they expect us to do? Well, we're supposed to figure out how to build one of those intelligence explosion grenades and uh, very carefully shape it to be friendly and uh, pull the pin. <laughs> uh, that is the Singular Institute's purpose. Eliezer, you mentioned the intelligence explosion, it seems to be dependent upon the possibility of recursive self-improvement, um, which of course isn't yet possible for um, AI. Um, have you seen that ph phenomenon in other systems? Have you studied any other system that recursively self-improves? I think the closest thing we've ever seen to a recursively self-improving system is the um, process of humans thinking about how to think and inventing science, which is a discovery of, about how to think about how to think. It's an extremely open problem, maybe the most important open problem in artificial intelligence. Um, I don't think there's any real-world uh, AI systems out there getting real-world mileage out of thinking about thinking at this present time, so it's a, it's a big puzzle. Um, okay, well, next, next question. Okay, uh, well, Dr. Canton actually made this point, so I want to elaborate on it. Um, what's your thought about evolutionary computing? Forget wetware, but just in current day models that use reconfigurable computing to emulate self-evolving systems. Where do you see that in your framework? I'm actually a major skeptic about that because right. the remarkable thing about evolution is not how well it works, but that it works at all. Mm -hmm. that, it, that you can actually get anything as complex as a butterfly <laughs> with, uh, out of a system with zero intelligence, just sort of stumbling around in the dark and moving on whenever it finds a tiny ray of light. Evolution requires um, hundreds of thousands of generations to create complex machinery that a human programmer can create in an afternoon. Ah, uh, but John Coase's department, his department chair at Stanford, he actually does this using millions of iterations in a very short amount of time. Just kind of wondering about that, what your thoughts are. But, but it's still a brute force use of computing power. The human mind d does it, I won't say elegantly, because we are still a big mess, but vastly more efficiently than evolution. We do 